Good morning everyone and welcome to the last of our St Mary's live streams. The good news is that next week uh, we're due to be meeting actually in church physically at nine o'clock Sunday morning at St Mary's Claverton. I do hope you're able to come. We understand that some people will not be able to come and very sorry about that. Um, we won't be able to live stream from the church because we don't have a broadband connection there, but we will um, aim to record the service and upload it to YouTube as soon as we can later in that same day next Sunday. So if you're not able to come, um, the options are to, to look at the YouTube uh, recording of the service later in the day. Um, perhaps we'll say by six o'clock in the evening we'll have it there on on YouTube to to phone in for the recording as some of you have been doing already on that number 01225 697 200 or to come to the live stream in the benefice of St Nicholas Barthampton which is continuing for a few more weeks um, 1045 on the same YouTube channel um, you should find that very easy to to find and so uh, sorry that we aren't able to be all of us together as the church, St Mary's church family um, but do keep in touch with one another. The church is open again this week um, today as it was last Sunday for private individual prayer only um, later on this morning so from 11 o'clock till 12 30 if you'd like to go along and pray quietly there um, you're very welcome to. It was lovely for a number of us to see each other, uh, many of us for the first time for quite a while, yesterday morning outside uh, on Super Saturday, um, keeping a, a distance from one another outside at Roger and Diane's um, house where sadly we were saying goodbye to Roger and Diane who are with us just for one more Sunday I think after this so we may see them next Sunday morning. Um, in the flesh again uh, but so uh, thank you for your hospitality outside there Roger and Diane and so uh, good to see those who were able to come to that. Um, as always uh, I suppose today's the, the last chance for this to text in to the live stream greetings to the rest of the church family um, there's my mobile number 07905 883075 and at the end of the service I'll read out um, messages that have come in for the rest of the, the church. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. Those words are drawn from our reading for today. Um, so let's join, if we can, in singing this great hymn.
We have come together in the name of Christ to offer our praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive God's holy word, to pray for the needs of the world and to seek the forgiveness of our sins that by the power of the Holy Spirit we may give ourselves to the service of God. Jesus says, repent for the kingdom of heaven is close at hand. So let's turn away from our sin and turn to Christ, confessing our sins in penitence and faith. Lord God, we have sinned against you. We have done evil in your sight. We are sorry and repent. Have mercy on us according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoing and cleanse us from our sin. Renew a right spirit within us and restore us to the joy of your salvation through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Father of all mercies cleanse us from our sins and restore us in his image to the praise and glory of his name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Blessed is the Lord. For he has heard the voice of our prayer. Therefore shall our hearts dance for joy. And in our song we will praise our God. Our psalm this morning is part of Psalm 22. Let's say this together. From you comes, comes the theme, theme of my praise in the great assembly. Before those who fear you, I will fulfill my vows. The poor will eat and be satisfied. Those who seek the Lord will praise him. May your hearts live forever. All the ends of the earth will remember and turn to the Lord, and all the families of the nations will bow before him. For dominion belongs to the Lord, and he rules over the nations. All the rich of the earth will feast and worship. All who go down to the dust will kneel before him, those who cannot keep themselves alive. Posterity will serve him. Future generations will be told about the Lord. They will proclaim his righteousness, declaring to a people yet unborn, he has done it. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. Let's turn in our Bibles to the uh, the Old Testament reading, or if you prefer just to, to watch this, um, the words will be up on the screen. Micah is one of the, what's often called the minor prophets, the very short books of prophecy right at the end of the New Test of the Old Testament. The first reading is taken from the book of Micah, chapter 6, beginning at the 6th verse, and is to be found on page 934 for Pew Bibles. With what shall I come before the Lord, and bow down before the exalted God? Shall I come before him with burnt offerings, with calves a year old? Will the Lord be pleased with thousands of rams? With ten thousand rivers of oil? Shall I offer my firstborn for my transgression, the fruit of my body for the sin of my soul? He has showed you, O oh man, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you? To act justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with your God. The second reading is taken from Philippians, chapter 2, beginning at the first verse, and is to be found on page 1179. 
of the Pew Bibles. If you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort from his love, if any fellowship with the Spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and purpose. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, but in humility consider others better than yourselves. Each of you should look not only to your own interests, but also to the interests of others. Your attitude should be the same as that of Christ Jesus, who, being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking the very nature of a servant, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man. He humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore God exalted him to the highest place, and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Here ends the second reading. Let's pray. Lord, our prayer this morning as we reflect on your word to us is a big one. Give us the mind of Christ. Amen. What is life after lockdown going to be like? People have been using the expression new normal for a long time now and nobody really knows what that's going to be. In some ways we'll have to wait and see but perhaps it would be a, it would be good to take a step back and think what do we want it to be? Many of us can identify positive things from this horrible challenge that our society has faced. A new community spirit, a new neighbourliness, concern for one another, camaraderie in the face of a common enemy, the virus, all that is something it would be nice to think we could hold on to after the restrictions are gone and not to go back to exactly how we were before. A slower pace of life, a delight in the small mercies and joys of life, taking one day at a time, a reduction in crime, we can appreciate the positive side of these things for our society without denying the terrible trauma that some have experienced and the damage from interruption to education, job insecurity, mental health challenges with restricted access to support and a possible rise in domestic violence. Has the closure of shops for so long done irreparable damage to the high street? Has it reduced the materialistic greedy side of our national character or simply transferred consumption to the internet. I remember those pictures from the day non-essential shops were allowed to open again and it looked like an undignified grab for stuff in exactly the same way as we had before. What about in the church? What is your hope for the church post lockdown? As I looked at today's reading, it struck me that Paul's desire for the church in Philippi and the way he urges them to change their attitudes going forward is exactly what we need to hear as we think about going forward from what we've been through. Therefore, if you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort from his love, if any common sharing in the spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, 
being one in spirit and of one mind. It's so important to Paul that they should be of one mind. That's what would make his joy complete. And I think I know how he feels. This is how I feel as a leader of St Mary's. I'd be so full of joy if we could hold on to this aspect of what we, we've gained from the challenges of the last few months. In the church, a new unity where everyone comes to the service and appreciates even though not everything is strictly according to their preferences. That's been a, a wonderful benefit of the sad restriction of not being able to gather physically for services. Will we maintain that unity? Will we take it deeper? Or will we soon spring back to some of the old divisions? Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, verse 3. Rather, in humility, value others above yourselves, not looking to your own interests, but each of you to the interests of others. That seems a profoundly unnatural thing for human beings, doesn't it? Everybody looks after number one. Saying that, reminds me of a time when I was a student and a friend of mine who had just become a Christian came to stay with me at home in Chesterfield in the Easter vacation. We had our family supper and then my brother, who's 10 years younger than me, so he was probably aged nine, got out one of his Easter eggs and shared it round everyone. That was how we did Easter, how we had Easter eggs in my family, but my friend was flabbergasted. He said, to me afterwards that it seems so weird, so unnatural, that a nine-year-old would not scoff all his own chocolate or complain about having to share it. But it's a picture of the way God calls us to relate to one another. What does this mean in our church family? Not looking to our own interests, but each to the interests of others. There's an obvious thing about online church, isn't there? It suits some of us not to have to go out to church, to be able to do church in pyjamas and not be seen. Others of us are a bit gung-ho about the risks of public gatherings, unconcerned about our own health, but feeling lonely, missing seeing one another and itching to have proper church again, physically. The natural thing is for each of us to expect others to fit into our preferences. Here's the challenge of God's word to us, to put others' interests above our own. How do we get that kind of unnatural mindset? Well, verse 5, in your relationships with one another, have the same mindset as Christ Jesus. So it's very worthwhile getting to understand Jesus' mindset, Jesus' attitude, the reading went on about Christ Jesus, who, being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage. Now that's quite strange writing, isn't it? Why does it say what he didn't do and did not think? Is there some way he might have regarded equality with God as something to be exploited, or is it contrasting him with someone else, someone who did think that way. Yes, it's setting him apart from everyone else. Everyone thinks, use your position to gain maximum advantage for yourself. If I'm in a position of power, I can get people to do what I want. I can claim expenses. I'm if I'm paid a salary plus commission or bonuses, I'll, I'll channel my work to get the most I can out of it. But Jesus is different. Some Bible translations use the word grasped rather than used to his own advantage here. It's back to the grabbing idea and setting Jesus apart from that. Somebody else did try and grasp 
equality with God. The first man, Adam, represented all of us. He and the woman reached out and grabbed the forbidden fruit after listening to the lying snake. God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be opened and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. He wanted to become like God, to take the place of God. We can despise Adam's action, just as we lament children's grabbing focus on the biscuits or we frown on the bargain hunters. But we have to recognise these things in ourselves as well. We have to, we have the same attitude as Adam every time we ignore God and his word in the Bible. Every time we think we know better and we'll choose for ourselves what's right and wrong. We're grasping, grabbing for an equality with God which is not rightfully ours. God made us. We belong to him. Our right place is as his loving subjects under his loving reign. That's what's best for us. It's what we were made for. Jesus, on the other hand, has always been equal with God. He was in the beginning with God. Through him all things were made. In John chapter 17 we get a glimpse of the relationship between Jesus and his Father God. Jesus is praying as a grown man and he talks about the glory that I had in your presence before the world existed. Jesus used his own position to, to maximum advantage, not for getting but for giving. The reading said he made himself nothing. He emptied himself. This doesn't mean he stopped being God when he became a man. He was still equal with God but he gave up the privileges of divinity. He swapped glory for shame, sapphire paved courts for stable floor as the hymn puts it, omnipresence for the confines of a baby body, omnipotence for human weakness, omniscience for the limits of a human mind. Verse 7, by taking the very nature of a servant being found in human likeness. That's the wonder of Christmas, but it's not the end of the story. How far did Jesus go in making himself nothing? Being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on a cross. We sometimes forget how shocking this is because the symbol of the cross is so familiar to us. But in New Testament times, a cross was as low as you could go. It was the most degrading, shameful punishment the Romans devised and was not, intent, was not to be mentioned in polite company. In obedience to his loving father, Jesus chose to do this, to save us. He put our interests before his own. That's the attitude he calls us to have to each other. And that, as we know, is not the end. Condemned as a criminal, Jesus was then vindicated by God, raised from the dead and Verse 9, therefore God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth and every tongue acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. In our family we sometimes play the game Settlers of Catan. According to the rules of that game, the person who wins becomes Lord of Catan and the other players are supposed to recognise that title until the next time they play. So when Barnaby wins, he expects to be called Lord of Catan, which of course nobody actually calls him. But here, Jesus is given a name which reflects what he uh, has achieved and acknowledges who he is and everyone ultimately will use that name. That name is 
Lord. Back in Isaiah 42, God says, I am the Lord, that is my name. I will not yield my glory to another or my praise to idols. D.A. Carson points out in this book, which I've um, quoted from before, to give such a title to Jesus, therefore, is tantamount to confessing Jesus' deity, but now as the triumphant, once crucified and now reigning, resurrected God-man. Every knee will bow before Jesus. Whether Paul can... Thank you, Samuel. That, that means that either we repent and confess Jesus by faith as Lord now, or we will confess him in shame and terror on the last day, but confess him we will. So let's not just enjoy the comfort of Jesus' salvation for ourselves. Let's pass it on. Let's pray now. Every knee shall bow and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. Lord Jesus, we praise you as you are exalted by your Father God because you lowered yourself for our sake. And we thank you for the benefit you've brought to us for that. And we look forward to the day when everybody bows before you and acknowledges you rightfully as Lord. And yet that's a frightening thought because some people will not have done that willingly. And so we, we pray for those we love who don't yet know you and ask that you would turn their hearts and incline them to bow the knee before the Lord Jesus in humble trust gladly now that they might rejoice with us in his exaltation at the last day for his glory and for your glory we pray Father Amen Here is love fast as the ocean
believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Well, now, um, as I had said, uh, we would do on the first Sunday of each month, we have this special liturgy of spiritual communion, unable to share bread and wine together at the moment, but looking forward to one day being able to do that again. And it in turn is pointing us forward to the great feast where we will uh, eat and drink with the Lord Jesus himself. Um, next Sunday, we are planning to have a communion service in church where those who are able to um, can share in the, the Lord's body and blood together as we feed on, our, on him in our hearts by faith with thanksgiving. The physical token that we'll actually have is just the, the wafer and no wine allowed at the moment. Um, and there will be extra hygiene precautions, so it would be slightly strange um, as communion services go uh, compared to what we're used to, but um, something we're very much looking forward to. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry. And whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Let's pray. Our Father in heaven, we lift up prayers to you, thankful that you are on your throne in heaven, sovereignly ruling our world. And we cry out to you because there's so much that is going wrong. There's so much that we need to call out to you about. We think of the new law in Hong Kong and the protests and the violence and the uncertainty and the injustice there and the virus that continues to take lives, the decisions that need to be made with your wisdom about easing lockdown, those who have lost jobs, those who are struggling, those who don't have enough food. Father, we think about longer term issues like climate change and the growth of our world population and the worries of how we're going to feed everyone in years to come. And also the scariness of acts of terrorism. Father, in all of this mess, we cry out to you as the sovereign Lord God. We pray for your mercy. We pray that you would be blessing this world and bringing about um, reform. Thank you that we can look forward to ultimate justice and ultimate restoration when Jesus comes back. But in all these situations now, we ask for your mercy. Please, Lord, come and sort out our mess. Father, we pray for the community around us. We pray for those who are lonely, that they might find comfort with your presence. We pray for those who are sick, that they might find hope in the promise of future restoration of their earthly bodies. And we ask that you might bring healing in the presence too. We pray for those who are anxious, that they would cast all of their cares onto you and know your peace. And we pray for those who are needy, that you would bless them generously with provision to meet their needs. And Father, we pray for those close to us as well. We pray for our families, that you would be with them, that 
you would keep them in the joy of your salvation, that they would know your son Jesus as their Lord and Saviour. We pray that you would be protecting them and blessing them in all they do. We lift up especially to you Thomas's mother Mary and we ask that you would be with her, that you would give her comfort and peace in these last few days. And we pray for the carers, those looking after her, that you'd give them skill and wisdom. And for the whole family, that they would be able to support one another and find comfort in your promises in this difficult time. Father, thank you that you hear us in all of our prayers. And we lift these to you, knowing that you love us and thanking you for your goodness to us. In Jesus' name. Amen. O God, the protector of all who trust in you, without whom nothing is strong, nothing is holy, increase and multiply upon us your mercy, that with you as our ruler and guide we may so pass through things temporal that we lose not our hold on things eternal. Grant this, Heavenly Father, for our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let's pray the Lord's Prayer in its traditional form, uh, rather than the exact words on the screen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. And the following prayers are framed very much in um, an individual way, as I, in the first person singular and we pray uh, as individuals relating to Jesus but remembering one another as well and you might like in your heart to be praying this uh, for others as well as for yourself. Thanks be to you Lord Jesus Christ for all the benefits you have given me, for all the pains and insults you have borne for me. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart. O most merciful Redeemer, friend and brother, may I know you more clearly, love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly, day by day. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your disciples, I'm with you always. Be with me today as I offer myself to you. Hear my prayers for others and for myself and keep us in your care. Amen. O oh God, help me to trust you. Help me to know that you're with me. Help me to believe that nothing can separate me from your love revealed in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, in these days of mercy, make us quiet and prayerful. In these days of challenge, make us stronger in you. In these days of emptiness, take possession of us. In these days of waiting, Open our hearts to the mystery of your cross. Amen. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you most humble and hearty thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness. We bless you for our creation, preservation and all the blessings of this life, but above all, 
for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And give us, we pray, such a sense of all your mercies that our hearts may be unfeignedly thankful and that we show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honour and glory for ever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Amen. In our next hymn, if you'd like to consider that to be the offertory hymn, um, do please think about your, your bank transfer of standing order or make a donation by text, which is kind of equivalent to putting cash uh, on the plate. And it, the, just back to the previous slide, that's um, how you give to St Mary's and the same number um, to donate through St Mary's to the Bread of Life Society. Um, where we may be able to, to um, support that charity in Lebanon uh, with food boxes for people in need or for paying, um, contributing to the, the salary of teachers at the education centre as Lebanon comes out of lockdown a bit ahead of us. Our final hymn is uh, a prayer for Christ's mind to change the way we live that we would be um, showing his his grace remembering how he put others needs before his own and so pray that that would be our attitude as well
The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let's bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The, the grace of our, our Lord Jesus Christ, Christ and, and the, the love, love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. So uh, it's not too late to send in a text now um, for me to read out in this last live stream. We've had a few texts coming in. So um, let's see, one was from uh, Hugh letting me know that my microphone was muted earlier on. Sorry about that. Uh, you didn't hear me introducing the second reading, I think it was. And um, Ray says, greetings to you all. And Ray Bennett, Joanna says thanksgivings for these online services together and looking forward to being together next week. Lovely. Well, may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. So let's find some way by uh, phone call or going to down to the garden fence or sending a text or something to offer one another a sign of peace. God's seal on our prayers. And um, let me just offer a sign of peace from a couple of people that just come in another one from Hugh good morning to you all I was sorry not to be there yesterday to say goodbye to Roger and Diane my parents are up visiting love to you all and Johnny says blessings as we move forward in safety God bless <laughs>